Alistair, I'm curious. Then, uh, after 16 UFC fights, you still have the highest striking accuracy of anyone on this roster. How have you been able to maintain that, you know, despite having different coaches and being with different teams? I'm sure they're telling you to do different things, but that one element has been extremely consistent the entire UFC career. I don't know, man. I just think I'm an accurate person. There's nothing more that goes into it than that? I mean, I'm sure it's just instinct. You, you fight the way you fight, but like it's it's astoundingly high. It's like eight percent higher than anyone else in the UFC history. And usually, someone that rate that high, maybe four or five fights, they take someone down, beat them up on the ground. You're doing it mostly striking. Great, right? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't have an answer. For At 39, obviously, um, you can make strategic adjustments. You can change camps, and these are things that can improve you. But in terms of like actual growth as a fighter, how much is possible at this stage of your career? Well, <clears throat> it depends on your uh, your attitude and um, I have the ability to kind of go uh, all in into a new direction because I've kind of done that a couple times in my career. Um, you know, put your shoulders to it and, and, and focus entirely on a new environment, new stuff, new coaches, new friends, new people, uh, new everything and uh, yeah, that, that brings changes. So I've done it a couple times. I know I can do it. Do you feel uh, this most recent change? Like, can you look back and say, wow, these things, whatever they might be, I can clearly tell they've gotten better? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Every uh, gym brings something different. But I have to say, um, yeah, team elevation is a uh, good chemistry, good technique, good everything. You know, Denver's an awesome city. So it's really, uh, really, uh, I really feel like my uh, place there. Do you see yourself finishing your career potentially there? Or yeah. Who knows? What do you like about Denver? Uh, people are laid back. <laughs> no, because everywhere is different, right? right. And uh, it doesn't have to be their fault, it doesn't have to be my fault, but people are very laid back. Uh, the mountains are beautiful, the elevation, of course, helps. Food is awesome. Alistair, I'm curious about um, <clears throat> whether you were following the Walt Harris situation and uh, what your reaction to that was and um, what you might say to him now if he was here. Yeah, it's uh, awful what happened to Walt. I was following it uh, every day. You know, the little bits and pieces of information coming out. Usually, I, I would go on Twitter, follow it. It's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's really bad. It's a really bad situation. It's not even. I have three dollars myself. Um, so yeah, no words, right? Yeah. Anything you'd say to him if he was here right now? I would give him a hug. I mean, um, you know, I'm, 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 yeah. What can you say to, to you know? can't really say anything to them. It's awful, uh, the situation. Did that kind of take your focus off of trading for a few days, kind of throw you for a loop? Well, it changed my focus in the sense of uh, that my opponent changed. Um, yeah, and of course, you know, you, you follow the news, but let's not forget it's not my child, it's not my relative. It's a little bit further away from me. Uh, but still, you're like, hey, shit, this stuff really happens. I, I went into the statistics. Uh, that stuff happens kind of often, too. Right? So, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really bad thing, and um, I don't know. I don't know how to fix that. Yesterday, you spoke of the belt still being your drive and a reason for still being here. Had things gone differently against Stipe a few years ago, do you think you'd be still be competing today? Um, I don't know. I don't know. They say everything happens for a reason, right? I don't really like that uh, saying, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think one of the, the reasons for my longevity, okay, I take good care of my body and my diet and blah, blah, blah. I see it as a big adventure. It is a big adventure. I was made for the adventure, um, but also I'm hunting something. And um, you can see with some other fighters that have already achieved it, then kind of like yeah, the drive kind of goes away. So yeah, so maybe it is it is because I have not had UFC gold yet that I'm still going for it. You think that's what happened to McGregor? Uh, maybe with Ronda Rousey, maybe with um, um, Luke Rockhold. Uh, yeah, other fighters that have kind of stepped away from fighting after that uh, became champion and then lost the belt because you've already achieved it, right? And who else was there? Um, Misha Tate. Camp champ, walked away after. Well, um, Zinho has a he hasn't made a huge point of it. When I asked him about whether he thought there was any Surinamese Dutch rivalry, he said he thought there was in this one. He said when he told people he was fighting a Dutch guy that the instructions from his relatives were to take it to him, put the polite way of putting it. Do you feel any Dutch Surinamese rivalry here? 
No, 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 no. To me, you know, like there's a lot of Suriname people in Holland. Actually, in fact, there's more Suriname people in Holland than there are in Suriname. I kind of see them a little bit similar. Uh, when you go to Amsterdam, you're going to see a lot of Suriname people. They're, they're, they're a little bit different, but they're cool. They're friendly. They got great food. Um, you know, the, the Dutch soccer team has always relied very heavily on Suriname soccer stars. You know, they've, they've you know, so I just see this as kind of basically the same thing. He might see it a little bit different, but I see it as the same thing. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Alistair. Thank you. Good answer, but of the idea. Nederlandse soccer team. Yeah, too. Yeah, too.